So the first question would be, what is your educational philosophy? Okay? So don't discuss any educational philosophy that you've learned in school. Like, okay, uh, constructivism is this and that. You don't have to make those definitions. Okay? Like I said in my past videos, the ones who are interviewing you are usually teachers themselves. They used to be teachers in the classroom. So they know these things already. Don't discuss definitions of terms, okay? <laughs> Don't do that. You're wasting your precious time. The interview that they're doing is not the only interview that they will have for that day, okay? They have a lineup. So you want to make use of your time wisely. The whole purpose of the interview is for them to get to know you as a teacher. Okay? So, again, the first question I want to go over is, what is your educational philosophy? So, employers are asking this because they want to know, like, what's your guiding principle as a teacher? And based on your answer, they will see whether uh, your teaching principle, your teaching philosophy aligns with their philosophy, right? So um, it is very important for you to answer based on your own experience or in your own philosophy, right? You're not borrowing it from a teacher because you've heard it from them because it is important to be authentic and, and it's important for you to show your personality, okay? So don't get to using your time describing another teacher, okay? Because they might hire that teacher, not you, right? So the interviewer, again, is looking to confirm that you have a teaching philosophy and uh, it will help them better understand how you fit in the school culture that is uh, emanating in their uh, school or district. So you can just select one or two uh, important points and then expand on it, right? So you might discuss, for instance, the ideal learning environment. It could be your principal, what's your ideal learning environment? It could be about that. Um, how do you foster diversity in the classroom? Like, how do you believe how students learn best? So it will, you know, showcase your the strategies that you're using because you feel like it's the best strategy for them to learn things from your class, right? So these things, or um, you can also talk about why you believe that education is important. So think about your own school, your own students, your own classroom, okay? Forget about your, your principal, forget about your favorite teacher. It should be all about you because you are the one applying. Explain a specific uh, experience that you have as regards that principle that you mentioned, okay? So I'll answer questions later after all the eight things, okay? So I hope that's clear. So if I was the one to answer this question, uh, my answer would be like this, okay? So I would say, I'm teaching a subject, physics, right? You know that. So physics is not a well-liked subject, and a lot of students really hate it. If they could skip the class, they would. But over the years, I learned through my experience that if I teach the lessons in a relevant manner, in a way that my students could relate to the concepts, how they will use it in their everyday life, how they can use it in the future career that they want to have, how it can help them do things more efficiently, how it could potentially save their lives and the lives of the people around them. I learned that it makes the subject more likable, right? So it helps my student be more, you know, patient with all the coursework that we're doing because physics is rigorous. So that has become my guiding principle when I'm doing my lessons. I have to make sure that my lessons are relevant to my students, whether it is something that they practice in school or at home or in the community. So it's something like that. So what principle do I adhere to? Relevance, right? And then I can give an example, for instance, because relevance is so important to me, I even wrote a book about the application of physics in the lives of my students when they start working on board. So based on my experience, I taught maritime cadets. So I wrote a book so that they would know 
oh, physics is necessary in my future job, so I need to learn this no matter how difficult it is. So it's something like that. So think about your practices in school. What helped you help students? Okay, I hope that's uh, helpful to you. So I'm going to the next one now. This one is a common question. Obviously, that's why the title is commonly asked questions for teachers during an interview. They can ask you about what do you enjoy most about teaching, right? Because honestly, there are so many teachers who are not being paid well, right? Uh, the teaching profession is considered one of the underpaid professions out there, but most of us stay in the teaching profession. Most of us would retire, would start as a teacher after graduating from the university, we'll, get, we'll be underpaid, but overworked, overstressed, but why do we stay teaching? There must be something in it, right? So when you're asked about this, recall to mind, you personally, why are you still a teacher despite all the stresses, despite the, uh, the low salary that you are receiving, right? Because through this question, they would know your passion, uh, what you love about teaching, obviously, because it will give them an idea. If you are in their school and you experience some challenges, would you continue to stay in school, right? Or would you quit in the middle <laughs> of the school year? Okay, or do you have that, you know, enough passion in order to continue teaching despite all the stresses? For instance, I personally would like a job that involves people, right? I don't like to sit in front of the computer not talking to people, okay? I could have done another career since I ha I'm thick-skinned, right? I think my English... It's okay, I could have worked at a call center for instance, but I don't like those things, right? So being with young people, teaching them gets me excited. And I feel fulfilled when I see students, you know, have a spark in their eyes. Oh, that's what it, that's why. Okay, that's why I should not be doing this and that because that's not safe, right? So those things, they give me, you know, a reason to continue to like teaching because I'm inspiring students and I have, you know, students who become teachers themselves, something like that. So again, think about your own experience because when we talk about our own experience, our eyes will light up, right? So they know, okay, this teacher is talking about her experience in school. So it's very important to be authentic. If you're a math teacher, because, you know, you want to uh, see your students be analytical thinkers, right? So they will not be scammed, for instance. So you want to contribute to their lives in that way. That's why you're staying uh, in school and continue to teach, right? 